And thank you everyone for joining. I'm Olivia Shumlin, one of the art directors at Putney, and along the way I'm going to be joined by my sister and co-director Becca Shumlin and our longtime directors and colleagues Mike and Julian as well. Um, all of them will introduce themselves before they begin. So I'm just going to start by telling you a bit about who we are here at Putney and, and a bit about where we came from. Um, we are going into our 73rd summer as a family-run organization. And here before us on the screen, on the right are my grandparents and Putney's founders, Becca's as well, grandparents, George and Kitty Shumlin. Um, George and Kitty were both devoted educators. Kitty's now actually in her mid 90s. She lives up the road. She grew up in occupied Holland and George was a teacher and a World War II vet. Um, the two of them actually met when George was traveling one summer during his late education on the GI Bill after World War II. And they fell in love on a ship crossing, married soon after, um, which you had to do back then in order to lead a program together. So it was a very romantic story. And actually, coincidentally, the honeymoon of their marriage was the original Putney trip this year on the upper right hand side, left hand side to Western Europe. Um, and we actually still offer to this day this very program. Back in must have been early, 1951, George and Kitty traveled over together by steamship with 16 students in tow. It took 10 days over to travel and, and 10 days to travel back. Um, one thing it's really important to emphasize is the idea behind this initial voyage that the two of them took with all of these students together was very much a response to a post-conflict world. Um, they really saw it as the way to help build common ground and as the best way to develop thoughtful and, and well-rounded young leaders. Um, really by off ushering students out of their comfort zone and unifying people from all walks of life through face-to-face -face interaction, giving students the opportunity to learn and to grow and collaborate across lines of difference, and ultimately just help contribute to a more peaceful society all while keeping them safe. Um, and quickly after that, you know, they really found the impact of educational travel to be incredibly transformative. Um, and this foundational mission has grown significantly, particularly after the past three years and even where we find ourselves today um, as we emerge from the mostly virtual and distance interactions. Um, and I will say we to this day have third and fourth generation students over the years traveling on this very program, which is neat. Um, and then below that, you'll see a photograph from Putney's first program to Tanzania in 1971. So we had a group of students climb Kilimanjaro and embark on a safari together. And believe it or not, we're still doing this today on this very program. We're working with the children and grandchildren of the very safari providers who welcomed us um, into their communities decades ago. And then moving along, um, is another notable example. Our uncle Jeff took this shot probably in the late 70s, maybe early 80s, when he was leading our language France program. And then the following photo um, was taken much more recently by one of our longtime leaders, Karen, when she led that very same program, Hiking in the French Alps. You'll see that her group happened to stop at a picnic on the very same rock um, where Jeff captured almost the identical shot and she hadn't even seen the initial photo that Jeff took. So it's kind of incredible. Um, so there's a lot of through line that you'll see throughout this presentation, particularly of the Putney tradition, the kinds of things we do, the longstanding history and the places where we go, where we've maintained these really incredible and sustainable relationships within our network of friends and contest, contacts all across the globe. So here we have George and Kitty along with their two sons, our uncle Jeff there and our dad Peter representing the second generation of Putney leadership. Um, Pete has an interesting distinction. He served as Vermont's 81st governor and has been back with us at Putney ever since. Um, we feel really incredibly fortunate to have actually his extraordinary contacts in our home state and all over the world from that pretty unique experience. Um, so these photos really touch, here's another one, on the multi-generation nature of the organization today. My sister and co-director, Becca, who we will meet soon. Um, my son, Max, there in the middle, technically guest representing the fourth generation, but he is only two and does not have a desk yet. 
Um, and then Kitty and Jeff and Peter there with us as well. So it's pretty neat and particularly unusual, I'd say, um, to be able to have the perspectives and various voices of generations all under the Putney roof. Um, we're really grateful for their Pete and Jeff's involvement as we move into our 73rd summer. And here we are, the barn today. It's important to point out that Putney is a much larger organization than just the family. We have about 35, maybe 36 incredible people at the heart of our organization. Um, we all collaborate here together under Putney's roof, which we do refer to as the barn because it is in fact an old converted cow barn um, at the end of a dirt road in southern Vermont. And if you're ever up that way, always we encourage you to stop by. We have families visit us all the time. We have beautiful cross-country skiing trails in the woods out back in the winter and a pond for swimming in the summer and ice skating. Um, it's a pretty special spot. And then here you'll see our collection of directors. Uh, they're made up of Peace Corps volunteers, former teachers, many parents. We have a licensed ship captain, outdoor adventurers, MFAs in writing, anthropologists, educators, and more. Um, and one thing that's really important to note is that they all bring their diversity of experience, their languages spoken, meaningful connections, knowledge, expertise to each and every one of our programs. So we feel incredibly privileged to work with them on a daily basis. I would encourage you to give us a call here at Putney um, so you can get to know them and, and have an opportunity to hear a bit about them and their stories and the programs that they curate. Um, what's neat about us here at Putney is when you call to learn about a program, you're speaking directly with the individual who curates that trip and remo remains in really close contact with our communities and contacts uh, that host us during the summer months across the world. So we will segue now into our 2024 programs. Um, each of our programs, it's important to just point out, follow uh I should say, fall under an umbrella of categories. So I'm just going to kind of provide a sense of the general structure that each of our programs follows. On each slide moving forward, you'll see the many destinations of programs, including those specific to high school students and those also specific to middle school students. Unfortunately, we can't go through 30 plus destinations, but we highly encourage you to give us a call if you're interested in hearing more about a particular program or destination. And just keep in mind as we move through, um, beginning with service in general, the vast majority of our programs are designed for small groups of students. I'd say typically between 16 to 18, traveling with two wonderful leaders who know the areas we visit well, they speak the languages, they're phenomenal mentors um, with extensive experience, not only in travel and experiential learning, but also in working with young people. And then typically our programs overall range between two to four weeks long. Um, starting out with service where we live quite simply together in a house or community structure as invited guests within our local host community. We spend, um, let's advance to the next slide here, the majority of our days working alongside and engaging with people from the community where typically we'll undertake about three to four various service projects. So it's important to know we work incredibly closely with our trusted contacts within the communities and village associations and their local governing body to kind of help us determine the projects to assess the greatest need and potential for meaningful impact in our role, of course, on a yearly basis. Um, we typically will have a significant construction project as our primary project, where we'll work alongside skilled masons and carpenters and local foremen on the work site, whether it's building an early childhood education center um, or teaching a new teaching housing facility in Tanzania, or we'll have we have low income housing for local families in Vietnam or restoring an irrigation system. And then in addition to our primary project, we'll also have several projects that range from lighter construction work to agricultural, environmental based project. And then there's always almost always a project focused around augmenting education systems. Um, so one thing that's really important to emphasize throughout students are out in the field, they're actively involved in the planning and implementation, implementation of these projects. We always break up into small groups for each project. And so we're able to rotate. So students are able to try their hand at something new each week. Um, and then one thing that's important to know is our general approach to service work has always been and continues to be, which is that we view it 
very much less as aid service, but really instead as a catalyst for authentic interaction, for friendships, understanding, collaboration, and cultural exchange. So the focus throughout these is very much centered around learning about another culture and way of life by forming these relationships with local people through the undertaking of these shared service experiences. Um, students also have the agency throughout all of these to pursue an independent project as a really great way to engage in some aspect of local life that's of particular interest to them. So it could be independent, it can be collaborative, anything from a physical project to a research project. We've had students in the past, this past summer, shadow a local dairy farmer or learn to play or explore the role of a traditional instrument. Um, we had a student in Morocco learn how to make a Moroccan drum from the goat to instrument as their independent project. Um, so it's really neat. And then our service programs also extend beyond our local host community. So we embark on various travel excursions throughout as a chance to kind of further explore the destination, either as a culminating travel experience, take Tanzania, where we do a four to five day safari through national parks with incredible wildlife or various three days trips Friday through Saturday, depending on the program. Um, all of our participants receive a service certificate at the end of the program for the number of hours worked. And here you'll see all of the programs and we would highly encourage you to give us a call if you have questions about any or all. Moving on to exploration. So again, these are small group programs, about 16 to 18 students. These are heavy traveling programs with a particular emphasis on really exploring the breadth of a place and really digging into the culture as we move through. Um, a number of these do have a strong focus on challenging outdoor expeditions, such as summoning Count Mount Kilimanjaro or skiing rugged um, backcountry of Patagonia for those who love to ski, but really the majority are heavy travel based of similar nature to the one that George and Kitty first led to Western Europe. Um, so these alternate off the beat with off the beaten path experiences, whether we're hiking across a glacier in the Swift Alps or, or biking the, throughout the coast of Holland, as we kind of move to more urban areas, often by train, um, where the focus shifts to really absorbing high culture in cities such as Florence, Amsterdam, Paris, or Tokyo. Um, a few of these, a number of these actually include a four or five day homestay or day stay component. For example, on our Australia, New Zealand and Fiji program, we live with a homestay family for five days on a New Zealand sheep farm. It's important to emphasize these are not teen tours or even close. Um, we travel by train as much as possible, as I said, and really tend to stay at least four or five days in each place uh, so that we continue to build authentic connections with Putney's longtime contacts to really gain a deeper understanding um, of the diversity of each destination as a traveler and, and not as a tourist. Um, on our Faroe Islands program, for example, we learn about Viking migration in Reykjavik, and then we visit some of the smallest Faroese islands. We head out with fishermen or practice traditional crafts with families who make a living there. Um, so we're really soaking up all aspects of their culture. These as well include um, an independent project of students choosing. So we've had students apprentice with a gelato maker in Italy in the past, or dive into Iceland's approach to renewable energy or design your own anime storyboard in Tokyo. Um, so it's a really great way to kind of explore something you're curious about or something you're passionate about and move forward and, and bring it back home. I will now turn it over to my colleague and longtime program director, Julian Hartman Russell to talk us through language. Thanks. Thanks, Liv. Hi, everybody. My name is Julian. I'm a program director here at Putney. Um, so I'm going to just chat a little bit about language and some other programs we offer. So our language programs are small group traveling travel based programs. We have about 14 to 18 students in a typical program traveling with two leaders who are fluent in the target language. Um, and so we offer these for middle and high school students. All of our students who join these programs sign a language pledge at the beginning of the program where they're committing to speaking in the target language for the vast, vast majority of the program um, as much as possible. And really, we're, we're looking for students who have that goal in mind who want to join this kind of experience. Um, and our philosophy to language programs is that students spend all year in the classroom. I used to teach and, you know, teaching language in the classroom has its has its limitations. And uh, I think th these programs are a really great opportunity to get out of the classroom and practice in the real world. 
constantly for, you know, four to five weeks um, on, a, on our programs. So for, for example, in Language Ecuador, uh, this is a bit of a unique program for us, one that I'm very passionate about, but it's a, a blend of language and service. So our leaders will lead uh, short language lessons during the day. <clears throat> and then uh, we go out every day and we work on projects in the host community that we're staying in, which is in the cloud forest of Ecuador, um, side by side with people in the host community. So we really build strong connections there. Um, and we get to work on community identified projects while also practicing Spanish in a place where it's really easy to and uh, it's just a great learning environment for Spanish in Ecuador in particular, I think. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of that program. And I like that it's a mix of language learning and service. Um, we also do a homestay in Ecuador with local families. And we arrange excursions to the Cloud Forest, to Cotopaxi. Um, and then we end in the Galapagos for five days, which is a really great way to end the program. We also have language programs in France and Spain, which are more travel-based. So instead of living in a host community like in Ecuador, you're traveling around, uh, staying in small towns and bigger cities, um, but it's really experiential based, getting to know the destination through practicing and speaking in that language. Uh, and we spend typically between three and six days per stop on those programs. Those programs also have homestays or day stays um, where we work with really long-term trusted homestay and day stay coordinators. Many of them we've been working with for decades um, to pair our students with local families, which is a really great opportunity to, to get to know the culture in a different way and really get off the beaten path of tourism in Europe. A lot of our students have come in with a range of language abilities. Some are you know, on the earlier, on the more developing side of language and some have been speaking for most of their lives. And we think that actually bringing them together, they tend to learn a lot from each other and it produces a really a great learning environment for learning language. The most important thing is that students come into these programs with a desire to learn and practice and are committed to giving it their all. So a lot of our students go, go back to school in the fall with a new sense of confidence in their language skills and excitement to continue learning. Uh, I'm going to transition over to the next category, which is career programs. These are more thematically focused programs for high school students, typically between two and four weeks. Um, you can go and they're in-depth exploration of a particular area of interest. Uh, so some, you know, we have the business of sports in Barcelona, farm to table in Italy, uh, CERN and science in Switzerland. The idea of these programs is that students really get to engage with practicing professionals in these thematic areas and get a window into the lives of people who work in these areas. Another, a, a unique part of these career programs is that each program has an expert that joins for a portion of the itinerary. Um, and Putney experts are really accomplished conservationists, researchers, photographers, journalists. We really have a great a great roster of experts this year, and you can read about them on the website for the career programs. My, uh, I program the CERN program in Switzerland, which I'll just chat about for a quick sec. We um, we have a lot of great hands-on activities during in that program. We visit CERN, the big particle physics research facility in Switzerland. We set up a whole day of workshops with scientists. Uh, we also do some workshops on robotics and biotechnology while we're in Switzerland, and it's a really great program for students who are interested in the sciences uh, to some degree, but they maybe don't want to go all the way into it, but they want to get a taste of different areas of science and innovation and travel to an amazing place like Switzerland. Um, I'll move on to pre-college. So these are campus-based programs. This year, they're all international. We have Barcelona, Tuscany, and Tokyo. They're larger group programs with uh, smaller college style seminars. So each student will select a major for their pre-college program. And they'll spend most of their time in that small seminar group of about 10 to 12 students. And the idea of the seminar groups is we're not spending time in the classroom, but we're really using that location, whether it's Barcelona or Tuscany or Tokyo to, to get out and learn about that topic through the lens of that place. So each of our seminars are led by terrific instructors who bring their expertise and passion to that topic. Some of the seminars we you could choose from would be, you know, history of art and architecture in Tuscany. We have fashion and culture in Barcelona, and we have anime and illustration in Tokyo. It's a pretty big range of seminar topics, and you can see them all on the website. Um, they're really dynamic. They're not, it's not like we're doing tests, we're not writing papers, but, you know, we may spend some time in the classroom, but then we're really get, getting out into that location to learn uh, and be immersed in that local culture and environment. Uh, Frequently, we will mix classroom seminar excursion time with different activities in the afternoon for students to do. 
Uh, we typically will have art workshops, hikes, uh, lots of getting to know the local environment and culture um, in addition to that time in the major group. We, it's also very community-based. So our group, it's a big program and you spend most of your time in the smaller seminar group, but we have a huge, a big full community meeting every day, uh, where every night where we talk about the day, share highs and lows, the whole campus comes together to talk about how their day went and play some games and just get to know each other a bit more. So it's a great way to meet students from all over the world and dive into a topic of interest through a seminar. I am gonna pass this over to Mike to talk about why choose Putney. Great, thank you, Julian. Uh, my name is Mike, program director here. I've been full time with Putney since 2012. I've been leading programs with Putney since 2007 um, and traveled myself on a similar program back when I was high, in high school. So I kind of understand uh, and I'm excited to share a little bit about Putney and, and what makes us unique. We understand that there are a number of different organizations out there that all um, you know, might offer various kinds of summer experiences for students. And uh, these next few slides, hopefully we'll get to talk a little bit about what makes Putney um, different from some of those other organizations out there. Um, number one, just starting off uh, before I get into outstanding leaders is just the fact that Putney's been around since 1951. We're the, one of the longest uh, running uh, student travel programs there is. And so because of that history, uh, we just have uh, amazing connections in the places that we travel. And we've hit on it before, but uh, on all of our small group programs, they're either two or three person leadership teams with a group of 18 or 21 students. Uh, I'm actually one of our hiring directors here. Uh, and so over the last uh, decade, I've had the privilege of uh, recruiting and interviewing and hiring just some of the most engaging, wonderfully talented and uh, interesting cohorts of uh, people uh, that I've ever had the pleasure to meet. And so, you know, we look for leaders that have real life experience, uh, traveling, speaking languages, most importantly, working with middle school and high school students in and out of the classroom. The average age of our leaders is around 28, 29 years old. So we do hire some people uh, right out of college, but for the most part, again, these are people with life experience. They've had spent significant time in the places where they're traveling, can add value, can add content to the program, but can also act as mentors, friends, role models, and really walk that line uh, between being a friend and a mentor and also the authority figure and the structure center of, uh, of the programs. Uh, you can visit our website. Uh, there's a big section. You can read the bios of all of last year's leaders. Um, and right now we're in the process of getting things set up so that we can start um, interviewing and, and hiring staff for next summer. We're lucky that we have about over 50% of our staff in any given year are um, returners from the previous summer. So along those lines, uh, for pre-college, as Julian was mentioning, uh, those are larger campus-based programs where we have like administrative and maybe residential life staff in addition to the professors and instructors that are teaching those seminars that Julian was uh, referencing earlier. And so these are often people that come from high academic institutions. They work professionally in the fields of what they're teaching. They're forensic biologists, they're lawyers, they're doctors, and they're the ones that are going to spend their time uh, throughout the course of your pre-college uh, seminar really engaging students uh, a little bit in the classroom, but mostly out and about using the city, using the campus, using the area as the classroom so that everything is kind of engaging, hands-on, experiential. And our students, because our class sizes are fairly small, um, you know, 10 to 12 students, uh, our uh, participants really have an opportunity to engage directly, formally and informally uh, with these instructors. And then outside of seminar time, uh, you're still participating in extracurricular activities with them as well. So it's a really great balance and just a really um, impressive group of people uh, that choose to spend part of their summer doing this kind of work, engaging with uh, students in this kind of hands-on experiential way. 
So programming, uh, like I mentioned before, because of those 70 plus years of experience and Liv mentioned at the beginning, the fact that, you know, the daughters and granddaughters and grandsons of the people that we worked with in Tanzania back in 1971 are still working with our student groups today. Those type of um, relationships that Putney has built over the years really allows our students to go deeper into a place, into a culture, into an activity, um, and for us to really be able to offer really innovative, unique programming that not a lot, a, a lot of other organizations are really able to provide. Like here, we're staying on Maasai pastoral lands, living with them for a portion of our Service Tanzania program. Um, you know, I think Julian mentioned before, we're, you know, offering programs in Cuba, which we've sent uh, student groups for on and off for years now. So just really uh, amazing opportunities for our student participates to participate actively in some really unique and innovative um, ways. And as we mentioned before as well, genuine cultural interaction. These are not passive programs where our students are flying to another part of the world, getting on a tour bus, seeing the Eiffel Tower, checking it off the list and going to the next spot. No, we're, we're living among the community members. This is pure cultural interaction. It's a two-way street. We are learning as much from them as they are from us. And we are, because a lot of our programs spend significant time in specific villages, cities, towns, regions, we really have opportunities to connect and interact with the locals uh, throughout uh, each program. Even if there's a language barrier, you know, the leaders are able to be that kind of liaison for our students uh, and really get them in depth uh, with the communities and the places where they're traveling. And again, hands-on, nothing passive. We want students to be active participants in their experience in the summer. We want them to take on leadership roles. We want them to advocate for themselves. We want them to want to jump in and try uh, traditional basket weaving or chocolate making or pasta making or whatever the activity is um, to be active participants in it. Um, and I think our programs really offer students an opportunity to step into those roles, to come out of their shell, to get out of their comfort zone, to try new things alongside a cohort of like-minded peers that are all equally out of their comfort zone. Um, and just, you know, having that support net and that support, support system of 16 friends, two leaders um, to, you know, try new things and be um, those active participants. We put, uh, Putney puts a very big emphasis on positive group dynamics. And we'll talk about this as part of our admissions process, but we limit the amount of friends that can travel on our programs together. So for the most part, students are showing up not knowing anybody else, and we actually prefer it that way. And in the end, you know, it's it can be nerve wracking for a student going into a program, not knowing a single person. Um, but by the end, overwhelmingly, students um, tend to tell us that they're really happy that they went into the experience without no one knowing anyone in advance and coming out, you know, with a really strong group of friends at the end. Um, our leaders facilitate the group dynamic, rooming assignments throughout the program, nightly group meetings to recap the day, talk about you know highs and lows and what the next day entails. And so our leaders go through a pretty extensive training with us um, on facilitating those group dynamics and just kind of creating um, a positive, open, welcoming um, community within your group and then taking that group and um, you know expanding that to the local people that we're interacting with along the way. Our programs are structured. So if you're looking for an opportunity to go to Europe, you know, do uh, two hours worth of activities and then have free time for the rest of the day, Putney is not that type of program. We are always facilitating, planning, um, and uh, participating right alongside the students along these programs. So, you know, we're together, we're traveling together, the leaders are living and working and eating right alongside the students 24 seven, doing bed checks at night, making sure everyone is well fed, getting enough sleep, um, you know, and doing those one on one check ins periodically throughout the program uh, to make sure that students are, are really able to thrive and, and get the most out of their opportunities. So these are structured um, programs 
that within that structure, we allow some freedom, some flexibility, allow students in small groups to explore a market for an hour or two within a defined area and a defined uh, time limit. So we give them that freedom within that structure, um, but that structure still exists. And lastly, and maybe this should have been first, these programs are meant to be fun within that structure, within that group dynamic, within the hands-on activities and the innovative programming. Um, you know, it, it's meant to be an experience for students to really build those memories, to bring back home with them, um, to build those friendships and to have a really good time while you're doing it, whether it's a cooking class or zip lining or rafting or a hike, or whether it's just sitting on the beach after a long day exhausted and laughing and smiling with your friends as you look at the stars. Like these are all meant to be fun, engaging, um, meaningful experiences uh, for the students. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Becca, to talk a little bit more about um, some important things to know if you're gonna move forward with us. Great, thank you, Mike. Hi, everyone, my name is Becca Shumlin. I am co-director of Putney, and I'm just going to take you through a few important details. Um, so as international educators, a commitment to safety is central to all of our program operations and has really been key to our success. Um, for over seven decades, Putney has brought student travelers and leaders all over the world and returned them home and safe and happy, and we plan to continue that. To give you just a few examples of our approach, all of our leaders are well-traveled and certified in CPR and first aid, and many hold higher certifications. During the summer, we stay in really close contact with our leaders, and we will involved will involve any parents if you know student health-related matters arise, anything you know, anything beyond a stomach ache or a headache, we will let you know. Um, and we maintain close relationships with the communities that we visit and really strong networks of in-country contacts, which include health practitioners, hospitals, uh, clinics, and everything health-related in all the destinations that we visit. And lastly, for all of our programs outside of the US, we enroll all of our students and leaders in International SOS, which is a leading provider of international medical emergency services in the unlikely event that someone needs to be evacuated for a medical or safety reason. On communication, um, Putney has a really strong commitment to maintaining open lines of communication with parents, students, and leaders. So we remain in regular contact with our leaders while a program is in the field, and we will communicate any essential information directly with the families at home. And then during the summer months, we here at the barn also have a 24 hour emergency line for families and leaders to reach us for essential communication. It rings 24 hours a day. It rings, you know, um, near the bedside of the directors who you just heard speak all hours of the day or night. And then each trip has its own program blog, which is updated by students and leaders throughout the program. And these are a really great way for families to keep up with all the daily happenings on the ground. And in terms of phone and internet access, students may bring a cell phone on most Putney programs. However, the first week of the program on our small group trips, um, they're actually phone free. So students contact their families upon arrival to the destination. And then after the group is settled together at their accommodations, everyone shuts down their phone and we, we begin a week long tech fast. And students may use their camera on their phones to take photos during the tech fast, but Phones are not used for calling or social media during this time. And then after the seven day tech fast, the group meets and together they determine how they wanna use technology collectively for the remainder of the trip. And we find that being intentional about technology really enables our students to fully engage in the experience and build a stronger sense of community within their group and you know strength and skills in creating creating these strong interpersonal relationships that we've talked so much about and more often than not we actually hear from students that they wish the tech fast had lasted longer because it had such a significant positive impact on the group experience 
Um, and I'll just talk a little bit about travel. So once a student has been accepted onto a Putney program, we will provide detailed information about program specific travel and flight logistics. So for the vast majority of our programs, we coordinate group flights for students and our leaders. And Putney will provide assistance with flexible travel options if they're needed. And families may opt out of a group flight when available. And we really try our best to accommodate and are always happy to help work with you to work through your travel plans um, and whatever you're planning for the summer. And as far as our application process goes, so the application is completed online. We have a rolling admissions process and will accept applicants up until a program is full. So it's always best to apply early for the best chance of securing your space in your first choice program. And to apply, you go to our website, click apply, create a login, and this login will become later what we refer to as the digital locker. And the digital locker is your one-stop shop from beginning an application to after acceptance. It's where you go to get all the necessary information and documents that you need to prepare for your program. So you begin an application by entering basic information like your name, your current grade, um, contact information so we know how to get in touch with you. And then you select your first choice program and secure your space by submitting a $700 payment which consists of the $200 application fee and a $500 tuition deposit. And all but the $200 application fee is fully refundable up until March 15. So once your space is secured, our admissions team will reach out to you to notify you that your space is held. And then the remainder of the application will open up for you to complete the last two pieces whenever you have time. And the remainder of the application consists of a personal statement, which is a short paragraph telling us about yourself and why you wish to join the program and what you hope to contribute. And then we also ask for two teacher reference forms where you simply list the names of two teachers who know you well and their contact information. And our admissions team will reach out to the teachers um, to get them to complete the reference form online. So you don't actually need to obtain the physical letters of reference yourself. And then, of course, in the event that a student is not accepted, that full $700 is returned to you. Um, and I should note that over the past two years, our programs filled earlier than ever in history with longer waiting lists than ever. So if there's a program that you're excited about, it's really best not to wait to secure a space in your first choice trip. We do have a very robust scholarship program. Scholarships are available through the Putney Open Door Fund, which is a nonprofit foundation whose purpose is to eliminate barriers for young people seeking educational travel experiences like these. They are financial need-based scholarships and they're currently open to students who reside in the US. Um, you can take a look at the eligibility requirements on our website. The scholarship application is a separate application process from the one I just described and the deadline for that is February 15. Um, but you can learn more about our scholarships, eligibility and the application process on our website. And you're always welcome to give us a call if you have any questions. We have a series of collaborations and partnerships at Putney that we help organize, and I will just kick off one of those. Um, so our academia programs invite intellectually ambitious high school students to learn from the finest teachers, scholars, industry professionals at Oxford, Yale, and the American University of Paris. So these are three separate programs. And each of these three academia programs offers two two-week sessions, and those can be combined into a four-week experience for which there is a tuition discount. And these programs are open to current ninth through 12th graders, and motivated eighth graders can also apply. And on these academia programs, students choose an academic major and minor seminar to pursue over the two-week program. So the major seminars meet six days a week and the minor seminars meet three days a week. And we deliberately keep these seminars small with 15 or fewer students per seminar. 
Um, and so in the company of motivated peers, students engage with course material under a supportive teaching environment of these really incredible distinguished educators and academics. And this program is actually a collaboration with Professor James Basker, who has taught at Harvard, Cambridge, Barnard, Columbia, um, and he also runs the Richard Gilder Institute in New York. Um, and he did his doctorate at Oxford on a Rhodes Scholarship, and now he serves on the Rhodes Scholarship Board. And he's directed and taught summer programs in Oxford for over 30 years. And Dr. Basker really brings um, these unique resources and specifically a network of faculty of just an incredible caliber who are able to teach these seminars to our students in the summer. And the majority of the faculty are, you know, tenured faculty, distinguished Oxford Rhodes, Marshall and Gates scholars, or they're professionals. And they are all deeply, deeply knowledgeable and passionate about the subject that they're teaching, and they love working with our students. Um, and the, the seminars on these programs are carefully designed, ranging from you know, hard science to social science to creative arts. Some are interdisciplinary, so a few examples are architecture, design, and sustainability. Um, we also have psychology and AI and sports, business, media, and law. So teaching is imaginative, it is experimental and student-centered. There are no final exams, no long essays, and instead learning kind of takes shape in the form of collaborative projects, debates, spontaneous presentations, and extramural work. And students are really on the move and learning in an immersive manner. And every student also has access to a wide array of staff-led cultural activities in the afternoons and evenings, and they can choose what they wanna participate in in sample. Um, and those don't necessarily need to be tied to their major and minor seminar choices. Um, so students can you know, hear from guest speakers, international experts, visit museums and plays and performances and really experience life just as a student at one of these incredible universities where we are based um, as they would. So strolling streets, getting lunch with friends in town or relaxing on the quad or on the Seine. Um, they're really incredible programs and you should give us a call if you wanna learn more about um, Oxford Academia. And I will now turn it over to Julian to talk about a few of our other special collaborations. Thanks, Becca. So the Harvard Chan Sea Change Youth Summit on Climate Equity and Health is the next program special collaboration we have. Um, we're entering the fourth year of running this youth summit in Boston. And the idea is that students come to Boston for eight days to tackle the intertwined crises of climate change and public health um, with a special lens on equity uh, during this residential program with the Center for Climate, Health, and the Global Environment at the Harvard Chan School of Public Health. So students will choose when they enroll in the program, they choose an action focus group, which is the action focus group is really a lens that students use to, uh, to approach the climate and health challenges with an eye towards solutions. Um, they're small group seminars, typically around 10 to 12 students with uh, a really experienced Putney instructor. And each day they're meeting with guest speakers from Harvard, uh, from industry in Boston and academia across Boston. Uh, we typically will have plenty of excursions and field trips and meetings with local contacts. Uh, and each student will work uh, in their smaller group to develop a community action plan, which is a practical action to, to take home and take into their studies and careers. Uh, so it's a really great opportunity to learn alongside leading scientists, public health experts, doctors, policymakers, and others affiliated with the Chan School who are really eager to share their knowledge and experiences with younger students. We organize a whole bunch of site visits and excursions in Boston. Uh, for example, the Climate Communications Action Focus Group last year went to visit the Weather Channel, and they had a panel discussion a discussion about climate change and global warming and how do we talk how do we differentiate those things with meteorologists, which are, which is a really great opportunity for them. I think they really enjoyed it and learned a lot. Um, we also organized some fun excursions in Boston. We go over to the main campus of Harvard in Cambridge. The Chan School is actually located in a different part of Boston. Um, and we every every most days there's a keynote speaker from the Chan School who gives an address, like a lecture of sorts, to all the students on the program. 
We also have full and partial scholarships available for the Harvard program, and uh, that application will be available on the web on our website later this fall. Next, I'm just going to chat briefly about Columbia. Uh, so we we part we work with the Columbia Climate School uh, to offer a program in Vermont called the Columbia Climate School in the Green Mountains. The climate uh, Columbia Climate School is the first new school at Columbia in 25 years, and was started to transform Columbia into a hub for climate research education and solutions. And so they approached Putney because they wanted to also work with younger high school students and not just college students. So um, we, we launched the Green Mountains program in Castles in Vermont in 2021. It's a two-week program. It's kind of our flagship program for, with Columbia. And it's a great way for students to engage with experts from the climate school through seminars and workshops. Um, we also have field trips to Burlington and to learn about conservation and renewable energy in Vermont. Um, and just learn about generally about cutting edge innovations and solutions to the climate crisis with scientists and faculty from Columbia. Yeah. Like, like the Harvard program, each student develops a community action pro, uh, plan to bring home, to bring into their studies and careers. Uh, and that's a really great way for them to continue their learning and, and activism. We also have the Columbia Climate Core, which you can read about on their website, uh, which are small group travel programs that explore a more focused area of climate science in depth. Uh, so we have, you know, clim climate communication in Alaska, uh, carbon capture and renewable energy in Iceland, and climate impacts and risk and preparedness in Chile and Peru. So those are similar to Putney programs, smaller group itineraries, uh, and sm smaller group traveling itineraries in, in these locations, joined by a Columbia Climate School faculty expert. And the Columbia programs also have scholarship funding available, full and partial scholarships um, and that information will be on our on the website later this fall i am gonna i'll pass this over to mike to talk about our next collaborations thanks julian thanks for sticking with us we're just about at the end here uh just a, another plug if you have questions we'll have a little q a session uh after these next two slides so drop them into the q a box uh, at the bottom of your screen, we can uh, answer them live or we can write a quick response as well. So please, we love your questions. Uh, happy to help. Um, one of my roles here at Putney is to uh, work on our collaboration with the Smithsonian Institution, which is very exciting. A few years ago, uh, the Smithsonian reached out to Putney um, and we began this collaboration running programs, um, started offering programs in 2021, um, ran programs in 2022 and 2023, and we're excited uh, about everything that we have to offer in 2024. So this collaboration uh, is truly that. I work very closely with our colleagues in Washington, D.C. at the Smithsonian and 70 years of Putney's history running student travel programs around the world, managing health and safety and leadership and dynamics and all of those things, combined with Smithsonian's 175 years of um, history is really able, uh, is what allows us to create pretty, you know, uh, incredible and dynamic programs. So the Smithsonian Institution um, is the world's largest research education and museum complex. You might be mostly familiar uh, with the museums in Washington, D.C. and the National Zoo, but they also have the Cooper Hewitt Museum in New York City, where we run programs. Um, these are small group programs, 16, 18, 21 students, two to three group leaders, ranging anywhere from eight days uh, on a program in Silicon Valley focused on technology and innovation to, you know, 21, 24 days uh, visiting places like Greece and Italy. They are all themed based on um, topics that the Smithsonian has covered over the years, either in their magazine, in their museums, in their um, gallery displays on the television channels that they run um, and really offer students an opportunity to better understand the places where they are visiting. So for example, here we see uh, Morocco on the left, Japan in the middle, and actually um, Portugal on the right there. Um, so an opportunity for students to better understand the history of a place, the culture, the people, the food, the textiles, the music, everything uh, that there is to offer in a place. And with that deeper, better understanding of knowledge of the place, they're able to experience um, the present. So again, hands-on activities, getting out and exploring, participating in workshops, activities, hikes, rafting, all of the fun stuff as well. 
And that the idea is that by the end of the program, students become um, better global citizens, are able to um, you know, take what they learn in the field, bring it back home with them, share it with friends and families, apply it to their own life. And you know, ultimately these students, um, you know, these programs are open to students completing eighth to 12th grade. Um, they're our future. And so, you know, what better way to allow them to shape the future of their world? Uh, than by giving them opportunities to experience it currently and to better understand uh, where places have been in order for them to really help shape where they're going. Um, so I'm happy to chat about any of these programs. Feel free to visit that website, smithsonianstudenttravel.org, or give me a call. I'm happy to chat anytime. And uh, the last collaboration that Putney has, I will mention here, is with National Geographic. We offer National Geographic student travel uh, these were programs that were started back in 2008 and have continued on uh, in various forms through today. We're excited to offer um, another amazing group of programs for 2024. And these programs allow students to um, really engage with the theme and the mission of the society, which is basically using the power of science and exploration, education and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. And so these programs have, um, uh, again, small groups with uh, two to three leaders uh, and have the added benefit, like the Smithsonian programs, which I should have mentioned, of having an expert join for anywhere from you know, four to five, six, seven days of the trip. And in the case of Smithsonian, those are Smithsonian student travel experts, they're art historians, they're NASA researchers, they're just incredibly uh, talented professionals that join uh, on their free time to live and work and travel and speak formally and informally with our students. Um, and the same happens on both Smithsonian and National Geographic programs. On the National Geographic programs, students are asked when they apply for a trip to enroll in one of two what we call on assignment um, focuses of the program. Now, every program offers photography and storytelling as one of the on assignments. And then depending on the destination, the other on assignment could be anthropology, culture, wildlife conservation, uh, renewable and sustainable energy in the case of Iceland. And so throughout the program, uh, that group of 18 might split up for part of a day, you know, groups of nine and nine, and some students might go off with their leader to focus on landscape or wildlife photography, and the conservation students might break off with their leader to go, um, you know, do species surveys or uh, sea turtle monitoring or, or things like that. And so again, highly value added with uh, National Geographic's reach, their experts and our staff uh, to run these small group programs. We also offer a program on the campus of MIT that focus on tech and robotics. And we offer a photography specific photo workshop in Yellowstone as well. So you can learn more at geostudenttravel.org. My colleague Hannah, who's right across the hall, manages those programs with our colleagues at National Geographic. So you can feel free to give us a call um, and chat with her as well uh, if you have more questions about National Geographic, or again, I'm happy to chat about Smithsonian. So at this point, I think we're just getting wrapped up here. Thanks again for, for sticking with us. We will uh, share this recording. Everybody that RSVP'd will get uh, this so you can share it at the end. But I do think I see a lot of questions rolling in. And so I think uh, maybe my colleague Rebecca might hop back on and help us go through some Q&A. Hi, yeah, we have a couple in here. You feel free to throw in some additional ones if they come to mind. But um, there is a question about whether the um, collaborative programs, specifically campus-based programs and the things with Harvard and Columbia, um, if what ages are good for those programs um, and are they, are they all inclusive age-wise? can grab that one just because I finished chatting about those. So National Geographic uh, collaboration Becca, offers- Becca, do you want to hop out and um, speak to that? Oh. Can you hear me? I was going to grab that one. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so nat for National Geographic, um, some of the programs are for high school age and students finishing ninth through 12th, but we do offer middle school programs with National Geographic for seventh and eighth graders. Uh, Smithsonian programs or for students 
All of those programs are for students completing grades eight through 12. Um, and then the campus-based like Harvard, Columbia, the academia and the pre-college programs are for students finishing ninth through 12th grades. Um, but Putney especially has a number of middle school age programs for students finishing uh, sixth, seventh and eighth grades. Great. Um, we have several like Oxford and uh, yeah, Becca, thanks. Um, for, we have a question about like the free time and the structure of campus-based programs um, and how students can sort of navigate the, the seminar time and the downtime. Sure. So for our academia programs, they are highly structured. Um, the seminar, so as I said, students choose a major seminar, which meets six days a week in the mornings and a minor seminar that meets three days a week in the afternoons and classes also meet on Saturdays. So Monday through Saturday, students are in class for the majority of the day. For the days that are major only, um, they're doing some kind of uh, academic or Oxford centric or Paris centric um, structured activity in the afternoon and same with on Sundays. So there's very little free time on these programs. We really try to keep the students engaged and getting as much as they can out of the experience. Um, we do work in a little bit of downtime in the evenings, but it's definitely a highly structured, uh, very, very fast paced program. Can you also men speak to um, if our slate of seminars are up for both pre-college and academia programs? Sure. So um, I may be wrong about pre-college. Someone can correct me, but I believe that for both pre-college and academia, the 2024 programs are not up on the website yet. Um, we are working hard on getting those up and they should be available on the website in, I'd say, the next week or so. So definitely check back there in the next week. You can also give us a call um, and we can help answer any questions. Great. Um, I think that is all uh, of our questions for this specific webinar. We went over a lot and this was a long one. Um, if no one else has anything to uh, drop in the Q&A, um, we will be sending out this recording tomorrow. There's also going to be a whole slate of webinars coming up um, that will get into more specifics about different uh, types of programs or about our partnerships in greater detail. They will be shorter, but more focused on one um, element of our Putney Student Travel Program. So you should be receiving emails on those um, shortly as well. And thank you for joining us today. Bye.